I've been analyzing fit gurus for about a year and a half now, and one thing that I've learned is people buy into the marketing facade that the fake gurus present. One thing that's common among all of the fake gurus is they use deception and flashy material items to sell you on their success. They're not selling a product or service, they're selling success. They're hoping that you, the potential customer, want to have their success and would be willing to buy their products or service to chase the material wealth. What their customers don't realize is that the fake guru's success comes from selling you on success. Today's episode is on Mozzie VS, a fake guru sports better who wants you to believe that he never loses. I've made videos on Steve Stevens and Vegas Dave, but Mozzie VS definitely takes the cake for worst sports betting fake guru on social media today. In this video, I'm gonna show you why following these clowns and buying their picks will make you lose your money. I'll detail how these losers can pad their success numbers, and then I'm going to provide the template to figuring out if someone is actually a legit sports better. I made $4 million in two weeks. I'm definitely biggest sports better in Vegas. This is Mozzie VS, the self-proclaimed biggest sports better in Las Vegas. As you'll see in these videos, he is always wearing a sports cap, which adequately represents his ability to cap every time he speaks. He tells us to stop the cap on his Twitter. How cute. To win big, you gotta bet big. It's the hurricane. I make a lot of money, I spend a lot of money. Tell me if you've heard this before. Huge sports better that is cleaning the sports books out with all of their profits is using flashy wealth to sell you on their legendary status. We here at the Bellagio, about to place a big bet today. $100,000 game, I need this, baby, let's go. I'm Miles VS, a sports band king, and this is my house. It's like the game room up here. I got a beautiful strip view. I might do a party and have some girls out here. Mozzie lives in a very nice house. I'm sure he was able to buy it using all of the proceeds from his sports gambling. I'm a licensed agent here in Las Vegas, so I'll gladly see how much he paid for the house. He most definitely bought. Most expensive thing I bought, my house. Can you tell us how much it was? That was like four million dollars. Good thing I have access to all of the home sales in Las Vegas. Even though I knew what the outcome would be, I still gave him the benefit of the doubt and evaluated every single home sale with a purchase price between $3 million and $5 million from the dates January 1st, 2018 until today. This search resulted in 157 properties displaying. I do not have a screen recording of the couple of hours I spent evaluating the purchaser of every single one of these houses, but I can guarantee that I went through every single house and did not find Mozzie to be the owner. Of course, some people are going to say, Spencer, he could have bought the house in an LLC or in a trust, which is true, but I also can see the pictures of the house and match them with the video and not one came close to matching. What's funny is the purchase price of homes similar to the one Mozzie claims to own is around two and a half million dollars. The houses in Vegas that are around four million dollars are much bigger, look a lot more exotic and aren't in that part of town. Here's a house that sold for four million dollars a year ago just to give you an idea of what four million dollars looks like in Las Vegas. I spent time on houses at the beginning of this video for a reason. His entire brand is selling you on success. If he's willing to lie about owning a house just to impress you, what else is he lying about? Successful people don't have to lie about ownership to impress strangers on the internet. Dan Bilzerian and Dan Locke are the other two clowns that got exposed as being renters even though they claimed home ownership. Why does this matter? I'm not trying to be a stalker figuring out where people live. It's because if you're willing to lie about owning a mansion so that your followers can buy into your fake success, then you're a fraud. It's simple. There's nothing wrong with renting a mansion. In many examples, it's actually smarter to rent. It's the act of lying to win random internet strangers approval and validation that is the problem and is honestly kind of pathetic. I've been professionally in sports betting for like four years. A pro sports better is pretty much somebody who bets on sports. It's like this, when you go to Paris, you gotta see the Eiffel Tower. When you go to New York, you wanna see the Statue of Liberty. When you come to Vegas, you gotta see me, the sports betting king. He is most definitely not a pro sports better. According to the industry research firm Eilers and Cryjet Gaming, sports gamblers fall into seven different categories. Casual dabblers, status seekers, super fans, action chasers, would-be pros, high rollers, and sharps. He is most likely a mix of status seeker and action chaser. He wants to be known as a high status sports better and definitely chases the action as he's made videos on putting down large sums of cash on single games. But the only one that matters is being called a sharp, which he most definitely is not. A sharp in the betting world is a name given to the sharpest minds with the sharpest bets, someone who has an edge over the books. Sharps are the most respected bettors in the industry. Sometimes casinos will even take sharp money before the lines hit the public because they want to see where the smart money is going and be ahead of it. Yes, the casinos know who has the smart money and who does not. When you see clowns like Mozzie claim to bet $100,000 on sports events, that is him putting a sign on his forehead that reads, I am not a sharp. And Super Bowl weekend, 
but we put a put a hundred thousand on the Super Bowl. Nobody bet more money than me in Las Vegas. Nobody win more money than me. The sports books put limits on sharps because they don't want winners. The casinos are in the business of making money. If they know you have an edge against them, guess what they do? Sir, you are no longer allowed to bet at this book. I'm gonna ask you to leave. That ain't how you sports bet, man. It's all about knowing who to bet on. That's why I got a hundred thousand on it. You feel me? Anybody else said he put a hundred thousand on the Super Bowl, they're lying. SBK. Mozzie puts large amounts of cash down on games. The casinos have years of proof of limiting sharp bettors to small amounts per game or of just not taking their money. But they gladly welcome Mozzie. I wonder why. The casinos and sportsbooks love guys like Mozzie. Here's why, and it's very simple. The casinos and sportsbooks rely on the mystique that you can walk in a casino and walk out a winner just a few hours later. They need people to believe that it's possible. Mozzie is the best advertisement that any sportsbook can have because he not only makes you think that you can win, but he also makes you think that you can win big. In tech companies, their IT departments will have what are called honeypots. A honeypot is a security mechanism that creates a virtual trap to lure attackers. Basically, the software lures potential hackers into a safe location that mimics the software so that they can trap the hackers. Mozzie does the same thing for the casinos. He's the best honey trap on the planet. How much do you think casinos would pay for this kind of advertisement? He not only gives them free advertisement, but he also gives them money. Who do you think is the sucker? They bring on the action. I love the casino, they take big bets, whatever if you want to bet big, Mirage will take it. They take future bets, prop bets, whatever kind of bet you want to bet, Mirage will take it. Guaranteed. This is what all of the losers say. I'm just shocked that a company that makes money on me gambling keeps taking my money. They always welcome me with open arms. I can't believe it. Right now we're in my office. This is kind of where everything goes down, where I do all my studying, where I get the gains, where I sell my games. And this is definitely not what a successful sports better setup looks like. He looks like he's about to watch YouTube videos on starting a rap label. Step one is you get cash and jewelry to make the fans think you're a boss. I love Vegas. The only place where you can wake up with a hundred dollars and you can make a thousand, two thousand, three thousand off there. When I first came to Vegas, I never even gambled. My first good win was I turned a fifty thousand dollar bankroll for three hundred thousand dollars in like a week. So once I did that, it was over. I was hooked. The biggest bet I ever made was five hundred thousand. That was on the news. Vegas casinos rely on whales to make their money. Your typical desk job employee visiting Vegas for a bachelor party throwing $100 down on the Rams to upset the Seahawks is not building casinos. The old cliche that you've heard your uncle say 100 times before is the house always wins. It's true. There's a reason billion dollar casinos are being developed on the strip every year. The books win because of the vigorish or their cut on all of the action. Over time, the vig is their edge. They win in the long run 100% of the time because if you have an edge, they show you the door. Ask yourself, if you were running a sports book and you knew some guy was coming into your books with an edge and was betting $500,000 on a game, would you take his money? Of course not. If Mozzie had an edge, meaning he was expected to win long term, they wouldn't take his money. They take his money every time and they just always seem to have a big smile on their face when they do. As soon as I start posting about my plays, I maybe had 100, 200 clients in like a week. Here's the cold hard truth about the fake guru world that is becoming so prevalent on social media. These clowns make so much money because the average consumer just doesn't understand that fake gurus exist. I know it sounds funny, but the awareness of fake gurus is still super low. Even smart people think that these clowns are actually legit. It's not until you find my content or CoffeeZilla's where the awareness finally hits you. He posted this on his IG stories. Let's assume he's accurate with his numbers and his sales are somewhere in the thousands. He's bringing in significant amounts of money. He sells picks between $200 and $20,000. Between the sports books cut, AKA the VIG, and the fee for these picks, it's basically impossible to profit if you're paying for picks. And that's before you even receive the picks, which in this case, you're receiving the picks from a guy who does not have an edge. It's gambling inception. You're basically gambling that his picks work that day with sports gambling. It doesn't take a statistician to realize that the odds of success are really low. Spencer, he has all of this money. He must be a huge sports gambler. On his Instagram, he has a picture with the description. Remember my uncle gave me my first Rolex for my 10th B-Day, best gift I ever received. My mom and dad, they not broke. They are not super rich, but they're not broke. So uh -huh. they had money. I just, I just, my uncles had my Arab. I was just around it. Like my uncle gave me, he just, I just love like flashy shit.
since I was just young. What did you do for the Rolex? Did you get like an honor roll? Like what happened? No, I mean, he just gave it to me. I used to always like wear his rings and stuff. My uncle used to always have like a lot of jewelry. Right. So he used to always, always wear his rings to school and, and he was just like, I'm gonna give you a Rolex. I think I graduated elementary school. I'm glad that he's honest about it. This isn't meant to shame someone that came from money, but it's important to know since Mozzie's entire social media presence is to create a facade of success with sports gambling. In his first Instagram post, he had jewelry, was sitting on a Lambo and was flashing money well before the sports gambling. It's none of my business how he made his money in the past or how he was around Lambo money, but if it isn't clear by now, Mozzie did not earn his money sports gambling. It also looks like he hangs out with the most legitimate guru on social media. I see you got a relationship with Batman Kevo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's my brother, man. Uh, we, we go back, man. Um... Yeah, we go way back. You know what I'm saying? Kevin, my brother, man, good. Well, that explains a lot. Up to you how you interpret that friendship. Now I'm going to explain why it's so easy to fake your success as a sports better. Those three wins are pointless. It's a lot of pressure. What makes a good sports better is that you either got it or you don't. You just gotta be born with it, you know? And I was just born with it. Apparently the best sports bettors are just born with it, whatever that means. One thing you'll never see from the fake guru sports bettors is proof of their bets before the game was played. A guy like Mozzie could make a hundred million dollars a month if he maintained a spreadsheet that contained his picks before the game and after the game and showed that he picked winners. I'm so confident that Mozzie is a losing handicapper that I'll challenge him to a bet. I'll create a spreadsheet and sign an NDA. I will track every pick he sends out before the game and keep records for 90 days to ensure no small sample bias. I myself will flip a coin for those games and show that flipping a coin will prove to be a better indicator of a winner than Mozzie. Mozzie, if you see this video, let's take the challenge. Let's have fun with this. I'll gladly sign an NDA and will not leak one of your picks to the public. After 90 days, we'll track your picks, your bankroll, and your winning percentage. I'll even teach you how my coin flipping strategy is so successful. It's all in the force you apply to the coin and the curvature of your wrist. What you'll see from these guys is they'll post winning tickets after the events are over as if it's proof that they're a winner. Most sports bettors can get near 50% winning percentage. The reason why the house always wins is from the VIG. If a gambler is not posting their losing tickets and they want you to believe that they only win big, they are complete frauds. The only guarantee in this business is that you're going to have a long losing streak. That's a big guarantee. And to be able to, st <laughs> to, be able to stomach that is what separates the guys that come up and just fall off the cliff or the guys that last. Even a sharp like Spanky, one of the more respected gamblers in the profession, says that losing streaks are inevitable. How do you fix the tout industry? These three are all respected gamblers who are actually legit. A tout is what Mozzie is, a guy who sells sports picks. Look, <laughs> you, know, you, know what fixes, you know what fixes the tout industry is people being smarter and realizing that there is no way you can sell picks and also be a good sports better. You're ruining your own market. If, if you're really that good, you're just ruining your own market. You're the answer is always stop buying picks. These guys are no better than a coin flip and are certainly not winning betters. Here's why real handicappers don't give out their picks. I don't think it's ever gonna happen. Um, it's not a big business. There's, there's not much to go around. And that's why somebody like Rufus is very nervous about talking too much and, and, and trying to give out his edge. Um, and, and other people like that. We don't want to kind of give edges out um, because it comes down to there's just not enough to go around. And Here's a real sharp with nothing to sell you, basically saying it makes no sense for a real handicapper to give out their picks. I have I have my tickets. Can I? Excuse me, sir. Can I please cash my tickets? I have winning tickets. Why are you kicking me out? What did I do? Spanky is someone who documents the amount of times he gets kicked out of sports books because the books know he has an edge and won't take his money. And I, I get a plays away too, so I got a lot of clients, man. I got a lot of envy. I mean, I got a lot of high. I got, I got clients from just regular people to, you know, high end NBA players, NFL players, everybody gamble. So. I make videos on why professional athletes go broke. I have actually never mentioned that athletes sometimes give guys like Mozzie money to gamble. Add this to the reasons athletes go broke. Yo, what up, Maxi? How's it going, bro? What's up, bro? You good? Yeah, man. What's up, dog? This uh, this man, whip is good. insane, man. Uh, I've man, never yeah. seen you in this one before. Yeah, I just got this today. I came out here that late just for this, man. What celebrities will do is call people like Fletcher with the Hollywood fix for promotional purposes. This looks super legit, as if Mozzie pulling up to a restaurant elicits the paparazzi to arrive and take video of him. It's all staged. You can even tell that Fletcher calling him Maxi because Fletcher thinks of Maxi pads when looking at him. That's sick, man. So you're doing it real big. Oh, uh, man. You know, 
on winning a lot of games, man. Man, so what's what's the secret to your success, man? Like, uh, I mean, I'm just I'm I'm, I'm the sports band king, man. You know. What okay. I'm so you know, I call this car. This is called a 49 er They want me this money. The 49 ers Yeah, they want they want this truck for me. So how did you how did you win it? What what did you bet? Um, I had the uh, 49ers uh -huh. minus two, no, plus two and a half. Okay. They played uh, the Saints. This is all advertising for someone's brand. It's a way for a wannabe influencer to market themselves as if they were a desired celebrity. One thing you have to remember about fake gurus is their entire brand is built around deception. They sell millions of dollars of courses or sports picks because people think they're legit. Fancy cars, jewelry, always talking about picking the right teams, magically always picking the winner. It's all a deception to the unknowing fan. You're not down with, Ve you're not down with no, Vegas Dave. Everybody know SBK the real, man. They, he, he, man, I get all his, all his clients come to me. For real? Okay. Yeah, they come so, to me they all, every day. So so if people want to get rich, they need to come to you? Oh yeah, if you want to make money on sports, Ben, man, I'm the new you holla at, man. If you can't tell by now, this is a paid advertisement disguised as the paparazzi following him around LA. This is the same thing Kim Kardashian did as Paris Hilton's assistant back in the day and carried on to the social media family years later. Here's an interesting secret about the celebrity world. Mossman's Jaden Seifarth, 20, who is based in Sydney, but often travels to the US where he says there is so much more work compared to home and more interesting people too, claims that Kardashian West tips splash photographers off to her whereabouts and in return gets a percentage of what they make on sales of her image. She selects the pictures and they are photoshopped. It's common knowledge over here. Every single pap knows, Seifarth told Fairfax Media. Other paps don't really bother waiting at her house anymore because she barely leaves the house, and when she does, she gives Splash the tip, then takes 60% of the money. The Kardashians and fake gurus are all the same. They only allow a very carefully crafted and curated image to be exposed to the public. The Kardashians do whatever they can to only allow certain images to be released. It's the same with fake gurus. They only want you to see the flashy wealth in all of their success. Since I promised I would tell you exactly how to figure out who is a real sports better and who is not, now is the time I deliver on that promise. It's a very easy flowchart. If they claim to make millions with sports betting and they sell picks, they are immediately labeled a fake guru. I really hope the self-proclaimed sports betting king will take me up on my offer of a sports betting challenge. To make it even more fun, I'll hire someone on Fiverr in the Philippines to make random picks and see who comes out the winner. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stop buying picks, you degenerate gamblers. Thanks for watching.